Welcome to our lecture online. When we look at this example, again, we do not need to factor the denominators that are already in most factored form. We just need to find the lowest common denominator. So when I look, I can see that we have the term or the factor x minus 1. We have an x squared and we have a 3, which means the LCD in this case is equal to 3x squared times x minus 1 which means we're going to change each of the denominators to that lowest common denominator. So when we rewrite this, we write this as 1 over, and we leave plenty of room, x minus 1 plus 1 over 3x and minus 1 over x squared times x minus 1. And yes, all three denominators are missing at least one factor. Here, we have the x minus 1, but we're missing the 3x squared, so we're going to multiply this by 3x squared, and we must multiply the numerator by the exact same thing. Over here we have 3 and 1 of the x's, but we're still missing an x times an x minus 1. So we have to multiply the numerator with an x and an x minus 1 as well. And finally, the final denominator, we're missing a 3, so we're going to multiply this times 3, that means we have to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. Now you can see that we have all three denominators exactly the same. Now we can write all these over the same common denominator. Common denominator of 3x squared times x minus 1. In the numerator, we have a 3x squared. We have an x. We have plus an x times an x minus 1 and we have a minus 3. So now multiplying out, multiplying the numerator and collecting common terms, we get 3x squared plus x squared minus x minus 3, all divided by 3x squared times x minus 1. And uh, let's see, collecting common terms, this is equal to, we get 4x squared minus x minus 3, all divided by 3x squared times x minus 1. Now, is that numerator factorable? Well, to check it out, we can use the FOIL method to see. So let's use the FOIL method here. In the front, we have uh, a 4 and a 1, a 1 and a 4, a 2 and a 2. Those are all the combinations. In the back, a negative 3, a minus 1 and 3, or a minus 3 and 1. We don't have to have all the combinations there because we already took care of it in the front. Now we need a negative 1 on the middle term. So we have 4 times 3, which is 12. And then 1 times negative 1 is minus 1. That's equal to 11, so that's not an option. How about 4 times 1, which is 4, and 1 times negative 3, that's equal to positive 1. Again, that's not a good option. How about 1 times 3? And 4 times negative 1 is negative 1. That will work. So we had a combination of these two and these two. Let's check again. 1 times 3, 4 times a negative 1, and yes, that will do it. So we can factor this as, in the numerator, we end up with 1x minus 1 multiplied times 4x plus 3. In the denominator, we ended up with 3x squared times x minus 1. And then notice, the x minus 1s can cancel. That is nice. So we're left with, in the numerator, a 4x plus 3. In the denominator, a 3x squared. And that's the final simplified form of our original problem. And that is how it's done.